I think we could all agree that there are plenty of death setup videos on YouTube already from creatives, gamers, tech enthusiasts, and even work from home warriors alike, you'll find no shortage of inspiration for the ultimate dream desk setup. But what if this year we have our very own dream hybrid desk setup together? Hey, what is up you guys? Tim here, and if you're like me, you're always searching for the absolute best setup. For countless hours, I can watch videos all day for ways to maximize productivity and elevate my gaming experience. Building a desk setup is not cheap. And at the end of the day, it's an investment. I decided to build my dream setup four years ago over the pandemic lockdown when I had to shift to a hybrid work setting. I've only made a few improvements since, but for the most part, I've kept everything the same. I've learned a lot from my current setup and think this may be a good time to give it a refresh. So. I thought it'd be a fun and collaborative project for us to improve the setup together. Make sure you stick around to see how you can take part. But before we talk more about this lucrative project, let me show you the current setup and what we're working with here. At the time, I was really into Star Wars and the setup was inspired by the clean Stormtrooper armor. The current desk revolves around all day hybrid functionality, work and play, serving as the foundation the infamous IKEA desk hack. I know, your boy's stuck in 2020, but this setup had everyone in a chokehold. For those who don't know, the IKEA desk hack includes two Alex drawers on each end with a kitchen countertop. I chose the Ibakken countertop in this concrete texture finish. I personally really love the look. It's got a unique character to it, and to ensure its stability, I drilled furniture legs into the drawers and was able to raise the table to my preferred height. I also added an extra leg in the back middle section to give it extra support and prevent the desk from bending. It's bending. I love this IKEA hack for the amount of desk space and the ability to store small items and organize all my tools and tech accessories. However, there are two things I specifically dislike. One, the lack of height adjustment. As a creator, there are times when I'll record in my desk and constantly have to adjust each leg of my tripod and that can get pretty annoying. The thought of being able to adjust the height on the fly sounds amazing. Two, while I'm glad that the extra leg supports the table, it does occasionally get in the way of my feet. I'm not a tall person whatsoever, but there will be moments where it can get pretty distracting. I don't necessarily think that these two annoyances are a deal breaker, Overall, I think the desk hack is a worthy investment for the value that you're getting. Just know its shortcomings and be sure to choose a sturdy countertop because there are desks from Ikea that are completely hollow. For four years of daily usage, it served me well. It's no wonder why the Ikea desk hack is still a popular option today. It's said that the average person will sit six to eight hours a day. As a creative and professional gamer, I sit at my desk for a lot of my time. I had my phase of buying those gaming bucket chairs, which I do not recommend by the way. I decided to invest in an ergonomic chair from Autonomous. Office chairs can easily range in the high hundreds and even thousands, but I thought this was fairly priced for what you're getting. All of my previous chairs were made of leather and trust me when I say that chair sweat, it's a thing. The Ergo chair has mesh backing that is stretchable enough to lean back against, keeping you cool and comfortable. The adjustability of the seat allows you to customize your seating preference and the headrest, it's also a nice addition. It can be lowered, raised, and tilted to your liking. Considering it's been a few years, the chair is still going strong. However, let me warn you that this chair now squeaks and creaks a lot. The build material is mainly out of plastic, but hey, you get what you pay for. And while although the cushion was great when I first got it, it is now less than desirable. It didn't bottom out, but it's not as comfy as it used to be. For the price, I think the Ergo chair has proven its value. It's not a Herman Miller and body, but we're not at that level yet. Maybe one day. As for the two systems that are powering this setup, I am currently running both a PC and a Mac. This is my first ever custom build. I'm not going to bore you with the minute details, but I bought this as an investment for all of my work, projects, and gaming needs. 
in 2020, almost every build that I saw was a rainbow puke. So I wanted something more monochromatic with a splash of personality. Powered by the Ryzen 9 3900X and this thick gigabyte RTX 3090, this build crushed every 4K footage and graphic intense game I threw at it. It's not a silent build, but combining Noctua's fans and Be Quiet's case, it performs fairly well without necessarily having to fire up its jets. I've listed out all the components of the build down in the description if you want more details. I don't necessarily think it's outdated, but there are definitely better options in the market today. Maybe we'll have an update on this build soon, but I don't have any specific upgrades in mind, and I have no issues running Helldivers 2, and that's all I care about at the moment. I have been a longtime PC user, so I'm very proud of my first build. But when the Apple M1 chips were first announced, everyone was raving about it. I honestly wasn't too sure at the time what the hype was all about, but eventually they released the second generation M2 chips. This is the M2 MacBook Pro in space gray. I get it, I get it now. I'm not exclusively team Apple, nor am I team PC. Either way, what works for you, works for you. However, I'd have to admit that the Apple ecosystem has been amazing for productivity. From features like AirDrop and iMessage, the MacBook has simplified my workflow and I find myself gravitating towards it for daily use, shifting my PC usage solely to gaming and streaming my movies and shows. I already own an iPhone and an iPad. It made it very easy to learn Mac OS. Since its purchase, I've exclusively used my MacBook for all of my work. Editing on Premiere has been buttery smooth and the M2 Pro has been speedy. But most importantly, I love that it's portable. Allow me to bring my workstation wherever I go. The MacBook has been set up in my desk for a plug and play portable solution where I keep it behind my second monitor on a human centric stand. I keep a USB-C cable readily available to easily plug in my SSD drives where I keep all my working files. I don't have a docking station yet, but my Anchor USB-C hub has all the ports I need for an ethernet connection to my NAS system and displaying to my second monitor. I'm not going to go in depth, but this network attached storage system by Synology is where I back up all of my footage and data. Since I have both my PC and my MacBook connected, I can access all of my backed up files on both systems. Having a dual system gives me different options for choosing my peripherals and accessories. So I made sure that what I bought would make sense for my hybrid usage. Starting with the monitors, I have two LG 27 inch IPS monitors that are held up by this monitor stand by Vivo. While it is sturdy and gets the job done, it is limited in its ability to make adjustments. I specifically can't raise the height of one monitor without affecting the height of the other. The main monitor is 1440p with 144Hz and G-Sync, while the other monitor is a 4K 60Hz display. Even though my main monitor is a lower resolution, I mainly use this one because of its higher refresh rate. Once you experience a monitor that has more than 60 hertz, you can never go back. A higher refresh rate will display your image faster, which means smoother motion. A plus for both gaming and daily use. On top of the main monitor, I have a Qantas Quintus. This has been a great addition to my setup by lighting up the area without taking up any desk space. It's nothing fancy and is connected via USB-C, but it helps illuminate the work area with four levels of brightness and four different temperature settings. It was priced only $40 and it's still working without any issues. Low key, I think it's an underrated desk accessory. As for my audio solution, I have the Modu M2 audio interface, driving my mic, headphones, and speakers. You honestly get a lot of value from this box. The M2 has clean preamps, good gain, a low noise level, and to top it off, clean visible metering of both your inputs and your outputs. One of my favorite features of this interface is zero latency monitoring. When I am recording voiceovers, speaking in Zoom calls, or even giving comms on Discord, I like to be able to hear myself. Not because I like the sound of my own voice, but because I think it's important to hear how you sound from the other end of the mic. 
I honestly think a lot of people are gonna give me a lot of flack for holding the mic like this. But the mic I have been using is the Rode Procaster. I have it usually held up on their studio boom arm, but this mic is built like a tank. You can literally chuck it and cause some serious damage because boy, this is hefty. The mic has a warm character that I think pairs well with my voice. Although it may be susceptible to plosives, Peter Piper played PC, nothing that a windscreen can't fix. This microphone does require a good amount of gain to use without noise in the signal, but what's nice is the Modu can drive the microphone without the need for an inline preamp like this cloud lifter. I only have it to give me a cleaner signal, but overall, I love this mic and it's been working flawlessly since. As for my daily headphones, I have been rocking with my all-time favorite, the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pro. The headphones are comfortable enough for all-day usage with minimal clamping force and plush ear pads. Yes, unfortunately, these are wired. However, once you try open back headphones, it's just a different immersive experience. I can listen to my edits and footsteps in game with more accuracy because of the difference in its sound stage. The high trebles of the Bear Dynamics may be uncomfortable for some people, but I have no issues using it. I just replaced the ear pads on these because you can literally tell that it's been four years because these great ear pads were not looking great anymore. They were looking crusty. I realized at the top of the headband, it's already starting to peel. So I might need to retire these headphones soon. I keep it under my desk next to my PS5 headphones. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not talk about cable management. But aside from cosmetic wear, the headphones are still amazing. Placed behind the desk, I have the PreSonus Eris 3.5 Bluetooth speakers. When I want to blast my music or even when I'm watching a movie, I prefer listening to my speakers than I would with my headphones. The great thing is I could also pair them to my MacBook Pro through Bluetooth. I have the speakers on stands and I place these foam pads to ensure that the audio is well separated from any surface so that it can give me a clear sound with proper listening levels. You may notice those acoustic foam panels behind the speakers. They're just cheap foam panels from Amazon. They don't really serve any purpose for sound treatment. I'm not a fan of the design anymore and I'm thinking of replacing it with something that functions in both aesthetic design and sound treatment. I'm not too sure yet, but definitely replacing something with it. Moving forward to the accessories on the surface of the desk. This is my mechanical keyboard, the Keychron K2. You can easily customize this keyboard to your liking. I ended up adding a layer of foam and changed out the switches with glorious pandas. I added this coiled cable and a right angled USB-C adapter from Amazon to give the keyboard a bit more personality. I also ordered a custom keycap of Darth Vader and put him on the escape button. Now there is no escape. Get it? No escape? It's a great starter keyboard, but the main reason why I opted for this one is because of its ability to switch from wired to Bluetooth in a matter of seconds. With a simple switch, the keyboard will then be able to connect wirelessly to my MacBook Pro. This goes the same for my daily mouse, the Logitech MX Master 3. With the click of a button, I'm able to switch from my PC to my MacBook. A workhorse productivity mouse that has great ergonomics and a total of seven programmable buttons. I love the shape of the mouse. I have a palm grip, which makes it very comfortable for me to use. However, as much as I love my MX Master, it's just not ideal to use for gaming. This is where I swap out Pro X Super Light. Not trying to be Mr. Obvious, but this mouse is shockingly light. There are lighter mouse out in the market, but the shape of the Super Light feels so comfortable in my hands. And even after years of use, this still has great battery life and it works perfectly fine. I unfortunately have experienced Logitech's infamous double clicking issue with this mouse. So far, so good. But my only gripe about the mouse is that it has its charging via micro USB, which I heard has already been replaced with USB-C on the second iteration of the Pro X Superlight. For me, Elgato Stream Deck is definitely one of those I don't need it, but it's nice to have desk accessory. 
I have laid out my Stream Deck with functionality in mind. Connecting to my PC, I have macro buttons to control Discord volume settings, the Philips Hue bulbs in my room, and even my Spotify player. It's nice having shortcuts and multi-actions within a hand's reach, but honestly, it's just a fancy display for macro buttons. Next to the Stream Deck, I have my PS5 controller, which I would occasionally use from time to time at my desk. I usually use my PS5 for couch gaming, but sometimes I just feel way too relaxed. You know that moment when you decide to like sit up when you're locked in? Yeah, I can't do that on the couch. This is why I keep my PS5 headphones under my desk, just in case I want to hop on a console. The desk mat that I have been using daily is Razer's Strider Hybrid Mouse Mat. I personally try my best to stay away from Razer products, but I thought, hey, maybe I'll give it a shot. The mat has an anti-slip base and its firm gliding surface worked really well for mouse control and speed. It may not look as great anymore, but it got me through four years. Thankfully, the good people from Hexcal have sent over a couple of products for me to check out. They are not paying me anything at all. All my thoughts and opinions are my own but I thought these would be a great first addition to improving our 2024 setup. This is Hexcal's desk mat bundle, a vegan leather desk mat that includes a magnetic cushioned wrist rest. This is the first desk mat I received where they shipped it completely flat. Every desk mat I have ever gotten was rolled up, so I could only imagine the problems you get when you order a leather desk mat that wasn't shipped in this specific way. It has non-slip rubberized bottoms and the stitched edges are seamless. There are magnets integrated to keep the wrist rest from moving. Honestly, the cushion is very comfortable. I have never used a wrist rest before, but so far I'm loving the typing experience. I'm definitely using this as my daily desk mat. It isn't intended for gaming, but I can easily swap to my other mat when I need to. Hexcal's monitor arm is built with quality materials, making it look and feel premium. The setup was simple. Clamped it onto my desk, routed my cables through the cable management system, and once it's all set, it doesn't feel like I'm breaking my monitors when I'm making any adjustment compared to the other mount. More importantly, I can easily switch the orientation of my monitors individually without any difficulties. If you're interested in either of these products, I've linked Hexcal's website and you can use the code Kairos at checkout for 10% off your purchase. This setup has given me a lot of insight into what works well for the ultimate dream hybrid desk setup. I want to be more intentional with every upgrade for the setup in 2024, but I don't want to just improve my setup. I want to help improve our setup. When I upgrade, you upgrade too. Help me decide on what we should refresh or add to the setup and I'll give away whatever the next upgrade is. All you need to do is like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, and comment on this video what we should upgrade next with your IG username. I'll announce the winner in the next video where I'll review our new desk upgrade. All the products mentioned in the video are linked down in the description. You'll be supporting me without any extra cost to you. Thank you so much for all the love and I will see you guys in the next video.